This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by my buddy Barry over at IllegallyBranded.com, the online cannabis brand portal that's up for sale from domain name through their pile of cool marijuana merchandise. If you've ever wanted to run your own online cannabis gear store, then you should email Barry at IllegallyBranded at gmail.com to learn more about how you can buy the whole kit and caboodle from him. That's illegallybranded at gmail.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Tuesday, July 18th, 2017, and you're tuned in to episode 290 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is the big news out of Massachusetts that lawmakers tasked with finding a compromise between the state house and Senate versions of an adult use legalization bill have agreed upon a compromise. The six member conference committee announced the big news yesterday that they had found enough common ground to settle upon a bill that pegs the sales tax on adult use marijuana at 20% which is right between the House's 12% and the Senate's 28%, while also finding a compromise on the issue of local control over marijuana business licensing. On that matter, the compromise bill allows communities that voted in the majority against last fall's adult use ballot initiative to block local marijuana business licenses through simple action by locally elected officials. Towns and municipalities that voted in favor of adult use legalization last fall would need to hold a voter referendum in order to ban or otherwise restrict legal marijuana business licensing. The compromise bill will have to head back to the state house and Senate for their final sign off and could be on the desk of Governor Charlie Baker by the end of this week for his consideration. It's expected that the governor will sign the bill into law. U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is on a bit of a nostalgic drug war tour lately and is partying like it's 1989. In recent days and weeks, Attorney General Sessions has pined for the return of the failed D.A.R.E. program and called on U.S. attorneys to throw every mandatory minimum book they have at people arrested for drug crimes. Yesterday, it was civil assets forfeiture making a return, which is the fancy name for when the government steals your stuff because it wants to. People who have their assets and money taken by the government under civil asset forfeiture don't have to be convicted of or even charged with any crime as the actual law holds the money and assets themselves as the offending party. It's outright theft at the grandest level and it's one of the more sinister aspects of the federal war on drugs. And yesterday, Attorney General Jeff Sessions said that his Department of Justice planned on ramping up their use of civil asset forfeiture law, especially when it comes to drug cases. While speaking at a conference of district attorneys, Sessions said that he hoped to have a new directive issued sometime this week detailing their new civil asset forfeiture policies. This is something of concern to the legal marijuana industry as Leafly points out that there is nothing in federal law that prohibits the Department of Justice from using civil asset forfeiture to go after cannabis businesses. Our final top story of the day swings us back to the Bay State, where a ruling was made yesterday by the Massachusetts Supreme Court that a woman fired from her job because of her use of medical marijuana could sue the company that let her go, setting a legal precedent that affirms a measure of rights to medical marijuana users that they hadn't previously enjoyed. I've reported on this story a number of times over the past year or so, with Christina Barbuto being let go from the company Advantage Sales and Marketing back in 2014 because she failed a drug test for marijuana. Ms. Barbuto was a registered medical marijuana patient at the time and used medical cannabis to treat Crohn's disease. She had informed the company that she was a registered patient and was told that it would not be a problem, yet was fired on her first day of work after her drug test came back positive for cannabis. The case now goes back to the state superior court where it will be heard. We'll report back as that resolves. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, my buddy Barry over at IllegallyBranded.com, which he has put up for sale as a single comprehensive package. You get the domain name, the website, the social media accounts and network, the relationships with the vendors, and a bunch of merchandise ready to sell. Open up IllegallyBranded.com to check out the website for yourself, and then email IllegallyBranded at gmail.com to learn more about how you can buy the whole deal in one fell swoop from Barry. That's IllegallyBranded at gmail.com. All right, time for the Blitz. 
The New York Times published a great editorial calling for further reforms of the city's policing policies around marijuana, which a recent study finds to be just as racist in application as any previous administrations, even as the overall number of arrests is down. This is a great one to click over for the full read. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Bruce Barcott over at Leafly wrote a long piece that connects cannabis prohibition to a recent series of grisly murders carried out in Pennsylvania, during which two men murdered, over the course of a few days, four other young men after agreeing to sell them large amounts of marijuana. This is another good one to read in full. We swing up to my neck of the woods here in Maine for a story where Colorado's former top cannabis regulator was in town to give some advice to state lawmakers on how to best implement adult use legalization. Marijuana regulation expert Andrew Freeman, better known as Colorado's first so-called marijuana czar, testified for more than an hour in front of the Marijuana Legalization Implementation Legislative Committee yesterday in the state capital of Augusta. Mr. Freeman said that fears of increased use of marijuana by young people were overblown, but that Colorado had made the mistake of allowing cultivators to grow too much supply. Maine lawmakers are expected to wrap up their work and present their plan to the public sometime in September. John Hiltz over at Marijuana.com wrote a good story diving into the global market expansion being pushed by legal Canadian marijuana companies flush with investor cash. As millions of investment dollars pours into Canadian licensed medical marijuana companies, some of that money is then being deployed overseas, locking up advantages in emerging markets like Australia and Germany. And since Canadian firms have the freedom to grow cannabis big, with some cultivation sites measuring in the hundreds of thousands of square feet, they can afford to carve out space in their production runs to easily support exports. Texarkana, Arkansas has become the first city in the state to pass regulation allowing for medical marijuana facilities to operate within its borders. The city's board of directors voted last night to mandate fees of $50,000 in the first year for cultivation facilities, with dispensaries paying $7,500 in their first year of operations, with a renewal fee of $11,000 following in subsequent years. The city could see its first dispensaries open up by the end of this year. The city of San Francisco will set up a new office of cannabis to oversee the city's legal marijuana industry. The new office will handle permitting issues, collect and release industry data, and handle all official interactions with both members of the business community as well as other city and state officials. And finally for today, Tom Angel over Mass Roots has a good piece to wrap up our episode as he compiled a collection of recent marijuana jokes made by members of Congress. I think my favorite fall day statement made by Democratic Congressman Steve Cohen of Tennessee, who said during a recent congressional hearing, quote, at least that's something else that marijuana has done good, is convinced General Sessions that the KKK was bad, unquote, referencing Attorney General Jeff Sessions' now infamous comment that he didn't think the KKK was all that bad until he heard they smoked marijuana. After hearing Congressman Cohen say that he was glad that marijuana had convinced Sessions that the KKK was bad, Congressman John Conyers of Michigan could be heard saying, quote, I don't think it did, unquote. Open up Tom's piece to read and hear all the other congressional pot jokes. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, my buddy Barry, over at illegallybranded.com and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.